What are intangible assets? Those assets which cannot be touched and felt. And goodwill is one such intangible asset. In this, the various methods of valuation are the intrinsic value method. Now, what is this intrinsic value method? What are the various provisions? What are the various schedules relating to all these things? So that we will be learning here. Then the dividend, the rules regarding the payment of dividend. Hello my dear students, I am Purnima, faculty in the Department of Commerce and Management, Vidyashram First Grade College, Temple of Excellence, Mysuru. In this session, I will be giving you an introduction of the syllabus for Corporate Accounting, 3rd SEM, BCom. Now let us see what this session holds for us. Now in this session, we will be having a discussion about the syllabus for 3rd SEM, BCom, for the subject Corporate Accounting. Then we will also having a look at the learning outcomes. Then what are the units? Then what are the internals and the exam pattern? So what is the question paper pattern for the exam? So this will be the agenda of this session. Now let us see what the syllabus is all about. Now in this we have the first unit underwriting of shares. Now, what do we mean by a share? Share is a share in the share capital. So, what do we mean by underwriting of shares? What are the various types of underwriting? And how do you calculate the statement of underwriter's liability? So, all this will be a part of unit one under the heading you underwriting of shares. Then second unit, we will be learning of profit prior to incorporation. Now, what do we mean by incorporation? Incorporation means registration or getting the company corporated or you just get the company, make it convert it into a joint stock company. Then in unit three, we will be having a valuation of the intangible assets. Now, what are intangible assets? Assets, those which cannot be touched and felt, that we call it as the intangible asset. Then we have the valuation of shares in the unit four. So what is a share? What are the different types of shares? How do you value the share? So this becomes a part of unit four and in the unit five, the financial statement of companies. So what are the financial statements of companies that will be a part of unit five? Now, in this first unit, we will be learning about underwriting of shares. Now, what do we mean in the introduction part, we will be having a look at the meaning of the word underwriting. So underwriters means they are guarantors to the issue. In case any company is going for the IPO, that is the initial public offer, and then if the shares are not subscribed by the public, these underwriters, they undertake to buy those shares. So such a process of purchasing the shares, we call it as underwriting or in other words, they are guaranteeing the issue. Then we also will be studying about the SEBI regulations regarding underwriting. What are the regulations laid down by SEBI regarding the underwriting of shares? Then underwriting commission. The underwriters are entitled to a commission. Then underwriters functions, advantages of underwriting. So what are the advantages of underwriting? What are the different types of underwriting? That is firm underwriting. Then we also have the joint underwriting, partial underwriting, complete underwriting, then marked and unmarked applications, determination of liability in respect of underwriting contract when fully underwritten and partially underwritten with and without firm underwriting problems. So we will be having a look at all these in this unit one. Then in unit two, that is profit prior to incorporation. Now, what do we mean by profit prior to incorporation? If there is a running business which is taken over by a corporate sector, then what happens to the profits earned by that particular organization before it is taken over by the joint stock company? So how do you just ascertain the profits and how do you allocate the profits as revenue expenditure and capital expenditure? So in this, we will be learning about the meaning, calculation of sales ratio and time ratio and also weighted ratio, treatment of capital and revenue expenditure, ascertainment of pre-incorporation and post-incorporation profits by preparation of 
Statement of Profit and Loss Account and Balance Sheet as per the Companies Act of 2013. So all this will be in Unit Two. So that is profit prior to incorporation. So how do you deal with the profit prior to incorporation and profit after incorporation? Then under unit 3, we will be having a valuation of the intangible assets. Now what are intangible assets? Those assets which cannot be touched and felt and goodwill is one such intangible asset but it is a fixed asset. Now the valuation of goodwill. So so what do you mean by goodwill? Goodwill is nothing but the reputation of the organization expressed in monetary terms. So the valuation of goodwill, what are the various factors that affect the goodwill? So this we will be learning and also the circumstances of valuation of goodwill. When should we value the goodwill? Then methods of valuation of goodwill. So what are the various methods of valuation of goodwill? Then average profit method. So in this we will be calculating the on the basis of the average profit we will be calculating the goodwill then capitalization of average profit method super profit method capitalization of super profit method and annuity method problems brand valuation and intellectual property rights. So the, in the valuation of intangible assets here mainly we will be dealing with the valuation of goodwill and in valuation of goodwill we will be dealing with the various methods of valuation that is average profit method, capitalization of average profit, super profit, capitalization of super profit and also the annuity method. Then next in the unit 4 we will be having the uh, learning about the value valuation of shares. Now what is the meaning of valuation of shares? So we all know that shares are issued at a price. What is the price of the share? It may be the face value or it may be the issue price or it may be the value at which it is traded in the stock exchange. In addition to this, what is this valuation of shares? Why there is a need for valuation? What are the factors influencing valuation? And what are the various methods of valuation? All this are part of unit 4. And then in this, the various methods of valuation are the intrinsic value method. Now what is this intrinsic value method? then yield value method. So based on the profits given, so we will be calculating the valuation of shares. Then the earning capacity method, fair value of shares method, rights issue and valuation of rights issue, valuation of warrants. So all these are part of the unit 4. And in unit 4, we will be exclusively calculating the valuation of shares and the various types of of valuation. Then under unit 5 we have financial statements of companies. Now in the Companies Act at the end of the financial year the company has to issue the uh, profit and loss account and balance sheet. So whatever is the performance of the company it will be reflected in the profit and loss account and the balance sheet. Now here before companies were supposed to present the balance sheet in the horizontal form but then after the amendment it 2013. Now all the companies are supposed to issue the balance sheets in the vertical form. So in the vertical form we have the profit and loss account and the balance sheet and there are also schedules relating to this profit and loss account and balance sheet and we have to just make the entries based on the schedules. So this is uh, what we will be learning in unit 5. So statutory provisions regarding preparation of financial statements of companies as per Schedule 3 of the Companies Act of 2013 and INDAS. What is this INDAS? Indian Accounting Standards 1. Then treatment of special items like tax deducted at source, advance payments of tax, provision for tax depreciation and interest on debentures. Now what are the various provisions? What are the various schedules relating to all these things? So that we will be learning here. 
then the dividend the rules regarding the payment of dividend so that we will be studying about the how the dividend will be paid and also the transfer to reserves so it is mandatory for every company to transfer at least 20% of its profits to the general reserve every year so what is that part of the profit we will be transferring to the reserve and finally the preparation of statement of profit and loss account and balance sheet so all this are a part of unit 5 and it is mandatory for the students to memorize all the schedules under which all the items appear then Next, let us go in for the internals. So, in this internal assessment, we will be having three internal assessment here. And in this, we have for the internal assessment, the portions will be unit 1 and unit 2. So, unit 1 and unit 2, we have the for the first internals, then unit 3 and unit 4 for the second internals and unit 5 for the third internals. So final marks will be awarded on the average of three internals. So if the student has written all the three internals, so whatever is the average, so we will take it and we will uh, finally award the internal marks. Next, the question paper pattern. So for the question paper pattern, so it is like part A, they will be giving you six questions and then out of that you will have to answer any five so they are all two marks questions so five into two comes up to ten then under part b you will be asked to write two questions so out of four questions you should be able to answer two questions so two into ten comes up to twenty in part c again you will be having four questions out of that you will have to answer any two so the outcome is 30. So, the total for external marks is 60 marks. Then, next, what are the books for reference? Now, the corporate accounting books, the so first one is Fundamentals of Corporate Accounting by J.R. Monga. This is a recommended book recommended by the Mysore University. Then, Advanced Accounts by M.C. Shukla and T.S. Gravel. So, this is the second book. And third one, we have the Corporate Accounting by Maheshwari and Maheshwari, most popular book, this one. And then, we also have the Corporate Accounting by S. But and also Corporate Accounting by Jain and Narang. So, these are the recommended textbooks for this semester. Now, with this, we come to the end of this session. Hope you have all followed. Thank you.